Good evening. We gather to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember the mass intentions for families and children throughout the world. Please stand. gathered this evening in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And as we begin, let us light the final candle on this Advent wreath. God, 
have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when David, the king, was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Are you the one to build a house, to build me a house to live in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you whenever, wherever you went and had cut off all of your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all of your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you, David, that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. And I will be father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne, David, shall be established forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel. Sorry, second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to the one who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. With you, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now, your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. The, um, this first reading today is from, we heard from this second book of Samuel, which that whole second part of that book is devoted to the story of King David, how he came to be um, king, and, and the, the, uh, the adventure that he experienced while being a king. So in this portion that we read today, he has, um, he has, a, he has an advisor, a prophet named Nathan, and he talks to Nathan, he's saying, you know, we, ha we have no temple, we have no place to place our ark the holy of holy things. There's no place. That's where we need to have something for that. And so Nathan said, yeah, we should start thinking about building this, this grand house 
for the ark, the presence, the presence of Yahweh. And then when that night Nathan goes to bed, he has a dream, and God says to Nathan in the dream, tell David this, don't worry about me. I'm okay. He doesn't have to build me a temple. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to build him a house. And it will be the house of David. And it will be a line of royalty that will extend to the end of the age. That's what I'm going to do. He's not going to build me the house. I will build him. He will become, his house will be called a dynasty. And he will be, so things get turned upside down. The point of this story for me is God often, I don't know why, things turn upside down, topsy-turvy, when God enters the picture. God is often messing up our plans. He often does that. I remember when we were first, I was so excited, we were doing the first phase for our synod, the synodal process at the parish level. All over the world, parishes were to be preparing for that. And I'd made a an announcement, we were going to all those interested in the synodal process to gather in the parish hall. This was a Saturday, I don't know when, I can't remember. It could have been two years ago, it could have been 20 years ago, I don't remember. Something like that, it was a while back. And I remember this, I went through and planned the whole schedule of events, how, how this workshop would unfold. First we would uh, have a hymn, and then we would have um, um, a hymn of the, on the Holy Spirit, and then we would have an opening prayer, and then very quickly we would go around the circle and introduce ourselves. Because there were new people. We weren't all St. Basil's. There were people coming from different places. They were interested in the Synod. So that's what happened. That was my plan. We started, we did the hymn, then we had an opening prayer, and then we started introducing ourselves. And I said, this is how you'll introduce yourself. You'll give your name, how you're connected to the parish, something like that. And then you'll say, why am I here today? Why did you come to this meeting? Why, why was this important for you? So that was it. The first person introduced himself and talked about uh, his connection to the parish. And then he started talking about his hope for the synod. And then we went to the next person, and then the next. It took us all morning. The whole time, three hours. And each person said, this is what I want to see happen in my church. This is where I see the need for growth. And, you know, uh, that was God bursting in. You know, that was the Holy Spirit. You know, if people say, well, I don't... God is not a part of my life, or I know to experience, that was an experience we all had of God's Spirit changing. He said, oh, this is what the Holy Spirit said. She said, uh, I'm not liking your schedule there, Father Darrell. We're going to do it my way. And that's what happened. And it was a much richer experience because of it. So this is what happens. God kind of turns things up to, upside down. The Holy Spirit gets involved. Things don't work out the way you suspect. But one of the things that we see in this reading today, when the angel, who is the messenger of God, comes to Mary, um, it, it's a topsy-turvy event, topsy event for her, too. These are, it completely takes her plans and turns them upside down. And, I, I, you know, that event, I don't know if we ever reflect on it seriously enough, what it would be like to have an encounter with an angel and to be told the news that she received. And of course she was afraid. What the heck is going on? And the angel starts by saying, oh wait, just a moment, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, I'm, I'm Gabriel. And then he tells her this news. So there are depictions of that event called, you know, paintings of the Annunciation. Sometimes they're very pious, and Mary is posed like this, and her eyes are closed, and the angel is, and it's all very pious and beautiful. It's true. A lot of Renaissance paintings like that, a lot of 19th century paintings, and it's a very beautiful scene. But sometimes we'll have a, an, a, an artist who looks at this experience and says, I want to show what it must have been like for Mary. And so in this one depiction, of the Annunciation, she's standing there. 
and it's the Gabriel angel. And guess what? He's upside down. He's hanging. It looks like he's hanging from his heels. He's looking down, but he's looking right in her face. Upside down. This is what I mean by topsy-turvy. He comes to her, and out of his mouth is a word. It says, blessed. But the word is upside down and backwards. But he's saying, blessed are you among all the favored ones. And I think, you know, that is a depiction of how God changes God can enter our lives and turn things upside down. And sometimes they work out if we cooperate with that grace, the love that God gives us. So that's what I'm thinking of today. I'm, not, I'm gonna leave it there. I had so many more things to say. But I think this is, a long, this is long enough because we're gonna be tired by the end of this weekend. Very, very tired. You know, tomorrow night I'm still playing, I got a puppet show going on tomorrow night. So I'm um, still working on that. So I'm going to leave it here. But this is the point that I would like to say. Often when God interferes in our lives, when his presence is felt, sometimes he turns things upside down. And it's not always for the worse. Sometimes it's for the better. We can always be surprised by God and how God intervenes and shows himself in our lives just want to say two quick things. At the back, um, we have printed the, um, the Archbishop's Christmas message. They're near the bulletins there. You can pick one up. And do you know we order these bulletins for children? And every week I see in this, like, nobody takes them home. We order these bulletins. We pay for them. They ship them to us from the United States. I just want you to know, and this one is for this fourth Sunday of Advent. It's got little activities and things that your grandchildren may really love. So that just pick one up. You may have kids and stuff. Because we order them. We pay for them. So let's use them, okay? That depiction, it's called a fresco that I'm t always telling you about. In case you want to look it up, I don't know, maybe you would like to look up that painting. It's by an artist named Megan Malott, M-A-L-O-T-T, -T, and it's in the chapel of St. Michael's at Rutgers. There's a chapel at St. Michael's called St. Michael's Chapel in Rutgers University, and that's where that fresco is. Anyway, let us stand now, having listened to God's word, let us now stand and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God seems to be very near us and especially loving towards us at Christmas time. Therefore, it is easier to come to him with our needs. For Pope Francis, other faith leaders, and political leaders, may they be successful in achieving world peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are homeless, may they find shelter for the hungry, may they be nourished for the lonely, may they be comforted, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May Joseph's example of kindness and love be a guide to all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, seeking to follow Christ more closely, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the modest surroundings of Jesus' birth inspire us to a simpler, more environmentally friendly lifestyle, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those called by the Lord to be priests, for all called to become consecrated religious, and for all, for all called to a lay ministry, that the peace of Christ will guide their hearts and minds as they proclaim the good news of salvation to his people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and those who care for them, 
May they know that God is with them, especially Jeffrey Harris, Philip Goldring, Arlene Dolan, Trudy Romero, Valerie Falcioni, Joe Emery, Pippa Beck, Kevin Sloan, Dennis Melieu, Teresa Hall, Amanda Manette, Myrtle Bruyere, Elder Louise Gagnon, Leo Hussein Zain Wittinstein, and a special intention for a parishioner's healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they rest in the peace of Christ, and may our gracious God comfort those who mourn, especially Tony Romero, Pat Keogh, Dory Hilks, Ted and Sadie Stephen, Jerry Riapel, Elizabeth Casey Rose, Monsignor Peter Schonenbach, Margaret Hahn Hoyne, Jeff Grusen, and may they delight when they hear the heavenly song of the angels, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, take pity on our weakness, and may your Son, at his coming, dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our world. We make this prayer through the same Christ, our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, make holy these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask this through Christ our Lord the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal uh, the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial one by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Basil and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, 
all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, we remember especially Lise Gatner and Jerry Riopel, Ted and Sadie Stephen, Dory Hilkes, Margaret Hoyen, Elizabeth Casey Ross, Tawny Romero, and all the dead, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and self and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us be seated. We just have a couple of announcements. Please refer to our Advent Christmas schedule for the hours of Christmas Masses this weekend. Carols will start one half hour before the beginning of each Christmas Eve Mass. The schedule is posted online and copies are available at the entrance to the church. The Knights of Columbus will be hosting their annual Welcome in the New Year Sunday brunch after the 10 a.m. Mass on Sunday, January 7th in our parish hall. What a great way to celebrate the new year as a community and welcome new parishioners to St. Basil's. Join us in praying on the World Day of Peace, January 1st at 4 p.m. The parish is hosting an interfaith prayer service with representatives from the Jewish and Muslim communities, as well as the Ang Anglican community, the United Church, Indigenous peoples, and the Hindu community. Volunteers are needed for Coffee Sunday beginning December 31st. Sign-up sheet is in the narthex. Good evening. Many of you know who I am, and sometimes I'm long-winded, but I only have two quick announcements. The first one is very important. When you have an opportunity to say thank you, you should take that, and I want to thank everyone who's helped out with the Christmas hamper program. All packages were delivered thanks to volunteers, and there's an awful lot of happy people in our neighborhood. The second one, I'm going to leave up for you to decide what you think of it. I was asked to go to St. Daniel's School to pick up a little token of uh, a gift for our food cupboard. And when I got there, there was a small school, small children, but they have huge hearts. They gave us a check for $1,652.65. I think that is inspirational, and it, there's a lesson there for us adults that if little children can do things like this, I think we've got to step up a little bit more. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you on this fourth Sunday of Advent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.